Oh no, I lost everything. There it is. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's episode 475 of PodQuest. Hey! And you're keeping that in. I'll think about it. It is Wednesday, September 20th, 2023. I am Chris, with me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. How you doing? I'm tired. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Uh, it's been a it's been a long week and it's only Wednesday. Mm, yep. True. True. But aren't they all? I look, I forgot to upload today's episode of Long Dark last night. I forgot to upload it in general. I forgot to upload it and then it was tenth there. I'm like, fuck, I still haven't uploaded it. So like I, I posted it I, I uploaded it at like eleven and then uh like set the premiere time for three. So like if it went up at three. But I was just like, yeah, that's that's the kind of week it's been. I'm just like out of it. I was stuck working till six forty five on Monday. So. You're always stuck working late though. That's nothing new. Uh fifty fifty. No, it's like it's it's at least eighty twenty. Well no, like fifty fifty as in part of the reason I'm usually working late is because I clocked in late and so I'm covering the fifteen, twenty minutes I might have clocked the, the five to twenty minutes that I might have been late. I'm working that extra five to twenty minutes after to cover. So I'm not really working late. I'm working eight hours. We'll just stop doing that. Yeah. Seven and a half. I, I, I'll I get in trouble if I get seven and a half. We need to have eight hours. What are they going to do, fire you? I, I mean, probably they don't have the not overhead. because they don't they <laughs> don't have the overhead. So, uh, But no. Drew. Yep. I raided out to somebody last night after I was done playing uh, um, Ender Lilies, right? Oh. Uh-huh. And we were talking about games. Uh-huh. And they brought up this game. It's uh, it's on on Steam. Well, they brought up the sequel, which isn't on Steam. They brought up the game that's on Steam called Salt and Sanctuary. I have I think heard you would, of that. I think you would love it. After I it, go looking through it, I think you would love it. It's, it's developed like, by Ska Studios. <laughs> it's a like two D um, man. Soul he just comp- board, he completely right? just ignored. Yes, the whole I, I I know it's a, from Ska Studios. I was going to go off also. about, like, Mustard Plug and Cat Bite, and I'm blanking on ska bands right now, and just, just giggled at it and, and ignored it. I just did it for the... But yeah, no, I, I actually know really nothing about the game, it looks beautiful, and yeah, it's kind of like side-scrolling Soulsborne. I just wanted to do the ska studios bit. It was That, that game was actually really popular for a while, like, seven or yeah. eight years ago? Uh, it, it came out in 2016. So, uh, seven or Salt eight years Sanctu- ago. Sanctuary came out in 2016. Um, Salt and Sacrifice, Sacrifice is the new one, I think. S- yeah, Sacrifice came out last year, but it's not on Steam. It's only on PlayStations and Microsoft Windows. It's not even on Game Pass. It's on like the Windows Store or some shit like that. It's oh weird. no, it's on it's on the Ep- Epic Game Store. Okay, but yeah, it's not on Steam, so you can't get it. Is it no? Well, no, you know, and maybe it is. I didn't check. I just know that the first one, Sanctuary, was free. On- yeah, the, the second one released on PC via Epic Game Pass. So. Yeah, they um Microsoft stopped doing games for Windows. So I know. But I like they stopped at, doing that bit pre last year. But like when you look at Google, it was just saying it would say like usually it would say like Xbox or Game Pass or whatever. But no, it was PlayStation Four, PlayStation Five, and Microsoft Windows. Which I'm like, all right, so it's not even on Steam. Like it's not even saying it's on Steam. Well, that so like, yeah, I mean that's it doesn't usually say Steam, does it? I, I don't. I feel like it's well, ju- it's just listing the platforms it's on, not the. The store. I don't know. I guess, I guess it doesn't. I thought it did. Yeah, like I'm looking at Salt and Sanctuary, the Wikipedia page. It says PlayStation 4, Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Vita, Switch, and Xbox One. Well, I thought it said the actual service on PC because there's 17 different services on PC. And you were wrong about all 16 of them. (laughs) Yeah. Ugh. Can't, can't trust you to know what storefronts these things are on. You're, you're a streamer. You should just have them all memorized. I don't even know what storefront I'm on right now, okay? You're not on any of them. You're not well, selling see, exa- anything. Exactly. Like, I don't even know what's going on. I don't pay attention to things. That's fair. I mean, you you, you were outraged about a game that was announced like six months ago. So. And I'm still <laughs> outraged about it, okay? <laughs> I can keep that outrage going. We'll, we'll yeah, get, that, look, is, we'll, that is true. We'll get into that. Because there, there's, there's a lot of outrage when it comes to these two directs. We'll get into it. I thought they were both fine. <sighs> Should I tell the viewers, the listeners, what we're going to talk about before we get into it? Yeah, what's on the agenda? On the agenda, there was a Nintendo Direct. There was a Sony State of Play. Uh, there was some stuff about Xbox leaks. I saw some people talking about them trying to buy Nintendo or some shit. I didn't really pay attention it's, it's to It's just funny, like some of the shit that got leaked. Yeah. Um, I got... Uh, uh, 
Even though it was six hours, I consider a little bit into Starfield, and I finished Ender Lilies, and, uh, Cobb, you played Crisis Core Reunion, which I guess is the remake of Crisis Core, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, but yeah, so how about that Nintendo Direct? Look, you're right. They were fine. Both of these were fine. But, especially with the Nintendo Direct, there were fucking five remakes displayed on that Direct. Yeah. The, I, I, what the hell? Like... Come on. I'm tired of it. I'm tired. Like, when, when they, when they started showing, uh, uh, Paper Mario, and I was like, oh, this is exciting. I can't wait. And then I started to recognize what it was, that it was Thousand Year Door, which uh, is a great game, sure. But I was, that's fucking remake. We're getting Mario RPG remake. We're getting Mario vs. Donkey Kong remake. We're getting another Mario RPG remake in, 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 in Paper Mario, um, Luigi's Mansion 2 remake, all three of the original re- uh, Tomb Raiders were re-released on Switch. Like, that's all they had to say was, hey, remember these old games? Yeah, they're coming back. Yeah, that's because the, the Switch is almost dead. They have no I, new content for the, for the platform. And you know what? I feel the same way as I did about the state of play. You really didn't have anything to show. You didn't have to show anything at all. But they, they do because they're a fucking publicly traded company and it's stupid. Like, like they the, have to show, they have to get marketing out there for what they will have at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Okay, then just release the trailers. Don't make a whole big event about it. Just release them when it's time to release them. Like, I mean, that's basically just, all the directs are now, right? It's just, it's a bunch of trailers all kind of grouped together. Yeah. It's not like they're live or have any, like... They don't really have personality anymore. Yeah, it, it, yeah, but it's just like you make a big event about something that, like all, like I said, all of these, things, all of the direct stuff was all remakes. Most but it's of remakes it was of remakes. things that people really want. I, I did not, I didn't know that there was a Mario vs. Donkey Kong remake, uh, 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 request out there or Thousand Year Door for Paper Mario. Like Thousand I didn't Year know. Door is one of the most beloved games in that franchise. Thousand Year Door is fantastic. It really is. But, like, I didn't know there was a big outcry for that game. Like, the, honestly, I would have been happy if they spent more time on Princess Peach than pretty much showing anything else on there. Well, you figure, like, with, with Thousand Year Door, like most of these, they're locked on old hardware because there's no backwards compatibility for them. Like, true. there's no way to play Thousand Year Door on any modern hardware. True. And they, they don't do virtual console, so it's not like they can just... Like, before you used to be able to get these games and just play, like, the version of the old console by just spending, like, 20 bucks on, like, I, a digital version of it. I, I'm, I'm gonna go out right and say, why do I pay 50, why do I pay, well, I only pay $10 a month, but why do people pay $50 a month or $50 a year for their Switch Online shit, for their expansion shit? You know, pop in those GameCube games that people want them to. And, like, keep them, keep that being something that people want. So they did, they added the original Paper Mario to that, I think, last year. With the N64 stuff, they just haven't gotten to GameCube yet. Exactly, and then they're going to release this version, and then they're going to get to GameCube and add that onto the Switch, or to the Switch 2 online, whatever they do, and then they're going to release Thousand Year Door from the GameCube version, and not the Switch version on there, and it's just like, it is a money grab, and that's like what all this shit is. They have... Like, They're a was, corporation, what do you expect? I know, but I, I'm allowed <laughs> to complain about it, I hate that argument. I hate that argument. It's a corporation. It's what they... I'm allowed to complain about it. You are, but, like, what else are they doing? Like, what is any company doing other than... Give give me new shit. Give me original ideas. And I don't mean original as in they need to make a new character, but give me another new Paper Mario. Give me another new... Give me a new version, or a new Mario versus Donkey Kong. Give me new... Like, even, we haven't even gotten to the state of play, but most of the state of play, like, their big things were also remakes. And see, like, their big, their biggest thing was, uh, was, was technically a remake, and that was Final Fantasy. Is that, like, I think now that is, like, away from remake, though, and we'll talk about that when we get to PlayStation. You're, you're right. It is. But, like, here's, here's the thing that pissed me off about Sony. They, they had, now, Resident Evil 4 remake is now worth it, in my opinion, because they're doing, the 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 Ava the Ada story the Ada side which oh, I don't right, right. think which I don't think Resident Evil Four had but then they made a big deal about Resident Evil Four VR which we literally just fucking got well aren't they like doing something to it for like PlayStation VR two I kind of 
I, no, they're, I they're, glazed over during all the VR stuff. It's the update. It's the uh, it's the remake Resident Evil 4 in VR instead of the original Resident Evil 4 VR version that they made. Oh, I didn't realize that they had two different ones. I thought they, the only they, VR version was the remake. I'm 95% sure they had a VR version of Resident Evil 4 already out. That sounds awful. Like, playing a 20-year-old game in VR just sounds fucking dreadful. Ugh. But we'll get to the Sony thing later. Um, yeah, I didn't mind the Direct because there are a bunch of games on here that I'd like to play in a modern capacity. Like A Thousand Year Door that I never played on GameCube. I or the it. Super Mario <laughs> RPG remake. I, yeah, I've I've never gotten to play Mario RPG, and I'm excited for that. And I and and Super Mario RPG is a 30 plus year old game, and it's not available digitally. And they're doing a full on enhanced remake of the game, and mm-hmm. I'm 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 interested and excited to play that. But I still I I'm still in that bitter zone of like, okay, I am getting I am becoming that grump of there's no original ideas now like when you when your biggest when your big event for the end of the year showcases five remakes or re-releases it's uh, all right give me something new yeah the, like i didn't expect them to have anything new like i'm surprised that that they even showed more of that princess peach game because they just announced that a few months ago with like no real information um but like this this is what i expect for the final year of this like or the final year and a half, however long it is, like, there's the Switch does not have legs anymore. Like, we're not getting Metroid Prime 4 on the Switch. It's going to be a Switch 2 or whatever that next platform is. Like, the last big game will be um, Mario Wonder, which we got, like, its own thing for yeah. two weeks that, ago. And, and again, yeah, like, li- literally a week. A week, it's, yeah, two weeks ago. It was a, it was Mario Wonder it was a and week, a week before later. Yeah, and then a week later, it was this one. Like, so yeah, two weeks ago we talked about Mario Wonder. Last week they had a whole like why did why did they have to have two separate things for it? Why didn't they just do fifteen minutes of Mario Wonder, five minutes of here's everything else, and then boom, there you go. Like it, it just uh, it, it's you, marketing, man. It's marketing. Yep. <sighs> no press is bad press or whatever that saying is. Oh, I did not mean to click on the video and make it play. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't like. I understand your complaints, but like. A bunch of these are games that I never played or played, you know, 30 years ago. I'm all for trying them, except Tomb Raider. I fucking hate those old Tomb Raiders. See, like, that is, I, I like, I'm more inclined to get Mario RPG because I've never played that, never had it. I don't have a way of playing it. I'm never going to get a, 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 an, an SNES. If they were to release the original version, but on Switch Online or Virtual, I would even pay $10 to own it online. I would do that. I would absolutely do that. I would pay it. And I, I would play the original version if I could. It, it, you're right. It, 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 it's, we, it's not easy to get. So it's nice that they're remaking it. But I, it's just, like I said, it's still, it still bothers me that, like, we already knew about Mario 3D or Mario, Mar- Mario RPG from their previous Direct. Right. And so then it's like, oh, here's the other remakes. And it's like three Mario remakes, a uh, Luigi's Mansion remake. Like, Look, at least they're not Wii U remakes anymore. They, they've they've gotten those out of their system. They're at least going back twenty years. Yeah, but I don't know. I just like think about it that way. Like Mario vs Donkey Kong, Thousand Year Door. Not so much Luigi's Mansion Two because that was just a three DS game. Um, Tomb Raider is even older than that. Um, and Mario RPG, like they're all at least twenty year old games by the time they release. Yeah. So well, there's and- no way to buy them new. There's no way to buy them digitally. Um, there's no way to, like, play them on modern anything or to get the platforms that they play on at, like, a retail it, price. And, you know, I think here's I think here's what my big issue is. My, it might not be, at least in this in this vein, it might not necessarily be the idea of the remake, but it's going to definitely be the idea of the $70 remake. But also it's going to be the idea of, oh, we got... Super Mario 3D All Stars two three years ago, and it had three very good games. It had Mario Sunshine, uh, Mario sixty four, and Mario Galaxies for six for sixty dollars. Which to me that's worth it. Mm-hmm. Why not give me all the Paper Mario's? Why not give me Paper Mario sixty four Thousand Year Door and uh, the Wii version of Paper Mario? Because I know there's a Wii or Wii U version of Paper Mario. Yeah, I Super Paper Mario. Super Paper Mario. Why not put those three on there 
for $60, $70. Make that more worth it. Yes, they're much longer games than the other three, but they're also, I, I feel like, I, and I'm, I'm not a game designer developer, I don't know this shit, but I feel like these games are probably easier to up because they're not really super, like, system heavy, because they're, they're mostly 2D and shit. So that's not really how that works. Um, and also keep in mind that this 3D All-Star one, those were just ports. They were slightly up ports, whereas these are remakes. So while I agree with you, it would have been nice if they just did like a, hey, here's the original three games. We like fix the quality of the images so they'll look a little bit better on your larger TV screen. Yeah. But like they're overall just the original games from the platforms that they released yeah. on. That would have been cool. In this I, case, I, like they rebuilt the games or, I, or the game because they didn't do anything with um the first one or the third one. Yeah. But has has Nintendo released a $70 game yet that was regular priced? Was Zelda seventy? Zelda was seventy. Okay, I couldn't remember. I believe. I, I believe. Pretty sure. I think. I I think you guys are right. I just I don't remember. I mean, when I just googled the uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong, I saw a headline that it is only sixty dollars. So that implies to me that lots of Switch games are seventy. Yep, Zelda was $70. yeah sixty million dollars. Looks like on Amazon you can get it for as low as fifty now, though. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Being a Nintendo game, it's a little surprising, but not much because it's Amazon. Yeah. Like, buying it through, like, Best Buy or, or GameStop, it is probably still 70 Mm-hmm. Because that's just how they roll. Um, But yeah, th- this Direct really was just, it, it was a bunch of spin-off game stuff for Nintendo properties. And I'm fine with spin-off games. I'm fine with getting more, um, more Splatoon, like, hearing more Splatoon stuff. I don't play it. I'm fine with seeing it. It's one of their bigger titles. It's an expansion stuff. It, we got an expansion for Mario Kart, which is like, all right, great. I'm, I'm, I'll be playing that. Um, even like, I was like, Dave, Dave the Diver is coming to Switch. And like, that game's been, I mean, it's been out on PC for like six months or something like that. I hear it's great. I haven't played it, but like, all right, that's cool. We got more Detective Pikachu, which we already knew about. Um, then Amiibo shit. And I'm just like, well, I, I don't know. Well. Trombone Hero. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That, that, that game gives me a headache. Because you don't like Ska. <laughs> no. Because I don't like the trombone noise that the game makes. The, Which or is at least ska. the noises that the, no, it's just at least the noises that the trailers were making for the trombones gave me a headache. I don't know if they sound different. Like, honestly, really? Unicorn Overlord, probably the, most interest, it oh, definitely right. the most interesting about game one. on there. Yeah, yeah, that that game actually does look like it'll be pretty cool. Yeah, it's a terrible fucking name. Like up there with like Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy for bad it's, fucking names. It's a it's a fucking Atlas game. What do you expect? I don't know. Is this, Atlas? Actually, this isn't Atlas though, is it? it it's a Vanillaware. Which I okay, is I it saw being Atlas. published by Atlas? I could have yeah, swore it, it showed games. Atlas on there, but yeah, it's a Vanillaware game. Which, I mean, they did Odin Sphere, 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. Okay, yeah, it, it is being um being published by Atlas. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the character models look like Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. Like, like in it the, the cutscenes or whatever. It looks great. It looks great. I'm, I'm totally into it. Saga, Emerald Beyond, I, I was pretty interested in as well. I never got into any of the Saga games. Like, they just... I don't know anything about them. Yeah, I mean, neither did I, neither have I, but, like, just what they showed in there, I was like, oh, this, this looks pretty good and interesting. Like, I, I've been on an RPG kick for a while, so maybe that might be my JRPG for next year, but maybe Unicorn Overlord will. Who knows? I don't know. There was something announced in that PlayStation state of play that, uh... I, I, I ain't getting it. I ain't getting it. Oh, don't say never. I'm not getting it. I don't... I didn't like the game that much. Yeah, but you might like it more with the DLC. I don't want to put the time into it. I Personally, I did not like the story in the world. And we'll get into that when, or we won't get into it, but we'll, it's for Tales of Arise. There's the PlayStation 1 announced an expansion for it, which that game's, I didn't realize that game was only two years old. I thought it was older. I actually did um, too when I, when I saw that it, that it said two, the two year old game. I'm like, isn't that from like 2019? Yeah, I thought it was like 2018. Like that just shows that time doesn't matter. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, the last, it's all just a flat circle. The last few years have definitely been longer. Well, it's it's all Jeremy Barame is all of this. I don't get that. You haven't watched a good place, so basically, no, I have. Way... I don't remember that at all. 
So they explain time as in it's not like you can, like, they can actually kind of time travel because it's just the way time flows, it spells out the name Jeremy Baramy. And then, like, even has the odd, the dot in the eye, but the dot's not connected. And she asks, what's the dot? And he's like, that's the 70s or something like that. <laughs> but, like, it's literally written out and all connects Jeremy Baramy and how it rolls. And so everything, like, time merges and connects to each other. Good good place is great. Good place is it great. It is. Man. I. I only watched it through the one time, so stuff like that, like, I don't really remember. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, the big things, like, like the Janet episode where she played everybody. Yeah, that, that was great. Um, the only other thing, I haven't tried it yet. I don't know if you guys have. Did either of you try F-099 yet? Nope. No. I want. I, I actually I want forgot to. about it until today when I was, um, reading through the list of everything that was shown again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm meant to try it over the course of the past week, but... I just, I, I didn't, I just didn't download it and try it and put in, put time into it. Probably yeah, like, maybe later this week, sometime this weekend, I might give it a shot. Yeah, I have no, I have no fondness for the F-Zero games. Like, they're not bad, they're fine as far as, like, these sort of racing games go, but. Yeah. I haven't, like, I don't get why people want new ones so much, I guess is the thing. Well, that's the thing. We want new ones. I want a new F-Zero racing game. I don't want F-Zero Super F Zero or whatever the, the original F Zero for the SNES. I don't want. I personally don't like that style of racing game. I don't. I hate. I hate Super Mario Kart for the for the SNES. I hate it because it just doesn't feel right to control. It feels very it's, slow. It's so slow and slidey, and it's kind. It feels the same with F Zero. Anytime I've tried to play F Zero on like the emulators and stuff, I just I don't like it. I I want even F Zero on the GameCube was not a good game. That's why it didn't sell well. It, it, I, I thought the game was great. I thought it was like, but it, like, it was just a racing game, and like people, not a lot of people, especially people who get GameCube games, aren't into racing games. But like, that's I want an F Zero game. I don't. I like. I want. I want there to be a reason to have fucking Captain Falcon and Smash Bros. Beyond the fact that he's been in all of them. How about we we get a reason for the Ice Climbers to be in Smash Bros. I mean, true, true. I mean, well, Kid Icarus Pit did get a game, so yeah, but over a decade yeah. ago at this point. But still, he got a game, so yeah, Ice Climbers are deserving of one. Or are they? Maybe I don't know. Mister Game and Watch, like fuck no. Captain Falcon. There are way they, there there are way older characters that have not gotten they, hey, any love. Hey, they've released Game and Watches. That is true. So, but I want like a triple A platform <laughs> exclusive <laughs> Game and Watch. You know. Why haven't they done that? Why haven't they done a Game & Watch on the Switch that's like a side-scroller adventure Game & Watch? Because they're cowards. They are. And what's Nintendo, his name? The robot. Cowards. Rob. We need a Rob game as well. No, Rob's never coming back. Rob's uh, in the same um, same landfill where they dug up all those E.T. cartridges <laughs> like a decade ago. Uh, but anything else on Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah, I, no, I was just going to say if you guys want to move on to the Sony or if there's anything else. Yeah, let's go to Sony. All right. Uh, so, uh, Final to, Fantasy. <laughs> hold on. To start the Sony thing, um, there's an article from IGN, uh, October 29th, 2021. They played 15 hours outmaneuvering infected villagers in VR in Resident Evil 4. Okay. Yeah. So, they, they, it was they, there was a Resident Evil 4 VR game, and, then, and now it's Resident Evil 4 remake in VR. Which at least seemed, like, I feel like that makes more sense than the 20-year-old version of Resident Evil 4 being in VR. Maybe. Who knows? I, I know. I, I, it's a I bad mean, idea. I, I, I didn't really play it. I'm looking at, at at it being played right now a little bit on the uh, IGN article. And it, it's a VR game. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is that. Is that. Um, but the more important thing out of there, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has an actual release date of February 29th, 2024. Nice. I'm I am I am excited for that. I really enjoyed Final Fantasy VII remake. So I don't know if you saw the thing I shared in in the group chat last week. It's going to be close to a hundred hours. Yeah, that's, that's it is what covering I, a fucking lot. That's that's what I heard, it and sure that's what is. it looked like. It looked like it's gonna go. Honestly, I I wouldn't be surprised if this goes through the and like beats the game. No, they, be a, they, Nomura has said it is a th- it is a trilogy. Yeah, I remember standalone games. I remember him saying that it's a trilogy, but like it, it's gonna go until Crater. I don't think it will. I think it, it's gonna deviate a whole bunch. 
or because they no. they already showed us in in that trailer some stuff that never happened in the original. I th- um, I think it, I think like first time you go to crater before everyone separates and you're without cloud for a while. You don't go to the crater at that point, do you? Am I you misremembering do. the timeline? You, you go to the ancient village and then um uh what's her name gets killed. Aerith gets killed and then you right. continue around and you get to crater and stuff happens. Oh, that's right. You do get all the way up there, don't you? Yeah. And then it for the right. for the first reunion and then things happen and everyone and then like you're running you 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 have a slap fight with Elena as Tifa and it's just weird. Well, that yeah, the slap fight I think was on the the hangar, right? It was yeah, it's it, all it, on at, in Junyun. Yeah. 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 Um, but that was but, that was after after the first time we went to crater. Yeah, because that's it. It's after Cloud falls into the life stream. Exactly. Yeah. I forgot that you actually end up there because you don't. Mm-hmm. They don't show you the crater the same way that like you know it later on. Yeah, you you ended up getting there through like dungeon style locations and not through the overworld. Yeah, and, like you're you're cl- basically different. climbing the mountain too. Yeah. Versus when you go back there later, you're literally like lowering yourself from the high wind. Yeah. Um, but I think I mean we're at least getting to Nibelheim the first like. Po- like non flashback Nibelheim, yeah, because they show Cloud and two party members um, that were not flashback party members confronting Vincent. So mm-hmm. we know oh, that they're, they, they reference they they talk about the weapons, which oh they do mention weapon too. The don't weapon they? they mention the weapons. It's like a weapon. It's like yeah, it's an organism created. It's a creature created to help defend the world if things get really bad or whatever. I mean that could be much earlier in the in this part though, just because. Like, the first, like, Final Fantasy VII Remake had that, what, 10-hour section at the end that wasn't part of the game? Like, the, the actual, like, running around, um, um, the Shinra building? Yeah, they, they extended the Shinra building a bit. So, like, that whole thing could happen, like, that could happen when you get to, um, Coast de la Soul. Maybe. Like, you, cause Hojo's there. So, like, you could have, True. like, a weird confrontation with Hojo after he leaves the beach while yeah. Cloud is on his Segway. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I'm excited to see Kate Seth and and see how Kate Seth plays. He was always my favorite character. Um, and I want to. I'm excited to see how Red Thirteen's actually going to play because I thought that was such a tease that you had Red Thirteen, but you couldn't control him. But he had his own move set and thing. You just couldn't control him. He was autopiloted. Right. And then I don't know if if you guys saw, but they did confirm <laughs> that there is no like carryover between games. Um, what they're going to do is, if you have saved data from Final Fantasy VII Remake and the Yuffie intermission, you're going to get um, Leviathan and uh, Ramu summons. Okay. okay. Um, but, like, all your material from the end of Remake isn't carrying over your level, your armor, your upgrades. None of that will. Because um, they, they basically want each game to stand as its own standalone title. Mm-hmm. Um, which makes sense. So, like, I mean, you can I'm... you can, in theory, play this one without playing the first one. Yeah, I'm totally not surprised. I I 100% knew that they that that not that they wanted them to feel different, but I knew that they weren't going to have any crossover. I knew it. I knew they weren't going to have any crossover. Yeah, it was one of those like I wasn't sure cuz did you guys play like the Mass Effects? I did, yeah. So like each of those like it it read your save data. You didn't start at the same level, but like it took into account like other things from the game. So I didn't know if they were going to try and do something like that even like because there, there were things was... you did in that game as far as, like, relationships with characters and stuff go. Mm-hmm. But th- there was no, like, choices for character relations. That's true, but you had, like, like the, the weird little genius kid, like, his missions. Like, if you completed all of those, maybe they stay completed. Like, you no, don't get the that's... rewards from them, but it just gives you, like, a new set of them. It's side quests. It's just it's just to fluff the game. They're, that's yeah. not going to carry over. Look, man, side quests are still quests. I know, but it's... it's that's... That's game design. That's not story design. So it's not going to ma- – it doesn't matter whether you do it or not. Yeah, I mean, carryover is, is game design, not story design. Yeah. Your argument's invalid. I don't even know what the argument is. Me either. But, yeah, it's going to be out in February, which I feel like like four years seems reasonable for how big this game is going to be. Yeah. I'm just hoping the, ne- <laughs> hope, hoping the next one isn't another four years. Hoping the next one might be, like, two years, but if so- it's – if it's going to be another 100 hours and two discs, maybe it will be four years. I'm well, I mean, the one thing the they'll have... one won't be. Yeah. Uh, from what they show, there's not 100 hours worth of stuff after. Uh, there there wasn't 40 hours of stuff before Midgar was over in the original. 
Well, Midgar is pretty long in the original. Midgar but th- is like four there was a lot hours in that tops. remake though. Oh no, nah, like, dog! You, if Midgar is like twelve, if you do everything, yeah, you can drag Midgar out a lot. There is a lot to do in Midgar in the original. The rest of disc one goes pretty fast because there's really not all that much between there and like the end of disc one. But yeah, it's funny. Like it's a lot of time, like why stuff because like. It just takes a long time to, like, get through all the cutscenes and all. But once you're out of Midgar, that game does kind of, like, fly through the rest of Disc 1. Like, it's it's a lot of open space and, like, just story beats. And as long as you know where to go and kind of, like, how to get through the missions, like, it doesn't take that long compared to how long it can take to get through Midgar just because of how many individual little things you have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but th- they did, like Richie was saying, like, they fluffed Midgar a ton. Like, Oh, for sure. And I don't know, like, they're calling this one Rebirth. We know Zack is in it, at least one scene, because they showed him in the trailer. So, like, who knows what the third game might be. The third game, like Richie said, like, this game could go to almost the end of the original game and then totally divert. And the third one is something completely different. Maybe Zack becomes the final boss. He's made everyone forgot him. Zack Zach is going to be a flashback. That, no, all that Z- stuff's going to be flashback. Zack is going to be Obito. He's going to come back. He's going to give Cloud the soldier it's, eyes. Yeah. And Cloud is going to learn Omni Slash that way. Yeah. That's how it um, is. But no, if, if you remember at the end of 7 Remake, um, Zack shows up and it's very obviously post that game, not a flashback. Was it though? Was yeah. it obviously post? I think it was. I forget exactly how it went, but I remember there was something that gave away that it wasn't the end of Crisis Core. I think they kept it ambiguous. Like... They didn't. They didn't say it either way. But to me, I was like, "This is probably just like a flashback." Like that's what I'm thinking because the scenes that you see of Zach in this trailer or in this stuff that they showed was him with a comatose cloud. Like it wasn't, right. and that that it, was definitely a flashback. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm more of the mind it was either flashback or hallucination because also remember there's a whole lot of cloud starting to hallucinate whether or not he re- actually remembers anything he says he remembers or was it oh. all actually Zack? <laughs> and so, so I just I just looked up like the what happened at the end. So Zack defeats all all of the the Shinra forces and then carries Cloud in the Midgar, which is not what happened in Crisis Core. No. Zack no. dies fighting off the Shinra forces. Yeah, so they probably changed the there might they might be changing the story a little bit. I have a feeling Zach is probably not in present day. I think he is. I think he's still he's still floating around somewhere. Yeah, he's cloud. No, I'm t- he's obedient. That's how he-, he got his name because he floats like a cloud. <laughs> no, I'm t- I'm telling you guys, he's obedo. He is pretending to be Sephiroth. We're gonna find out at the end of the game that like he is actually not Sephiroth. He's 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 Zach, and then the real Sephiroth is gonna come back and steal his eyes. Probably, you're right. Um. I'll be 100% be- honest, I was semi-working while I was watching this, I was writing scripts and things, so I didn't watch it all too in-depth, so I didn't really watch a lot of the Spider-Man thing. To me, it just felt like, alright, and I, like, I don't mean this as a negative, but it's more Spider-Man. No, that's what a lot of outlets are saying. Like, I was listening to the Giant Bombcast today, and Tamor was on, and he's like, I had to actually put, like, a disclaimer, because I, I, in in his preview, he said it looked like more of the same, but, like... It looks like more of the same of one of the best superhero games ever made. Yeah. Like, it's a good thing that they took what they knew and they just iterated on it. Like, yeah. they added Brooklyn and, and part of Queens to the, um, the map. Like, it's a, it, yeah. the map is twice the size it was before. And apparently uh, the swapping between Miles and Peter is almost instantaneous. Mm-hmm. So, I'm looking forward to that one and it's soon. Was it like October or November? Uh, let's see. Um, it doesn't say in the article. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say in the article when. I think it's like late October. Let's see. Spider-Man 2. October 20th. So a, a month from today. Yeah, I'm, I am looking forward to that one because both the original and the Miles Morales um, story were both really good. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, we already went over. They had Resident Evil 4, Ada story, separate ways is what it's called. And then they started the show with like a VR showcase. That's and the thing that I, I kind of glazed over. I, I, it was, it's, it's VR. <laughs> it's VR. 
I don't remember what the VR games were that they showed, but it's VR. Um, I don't have VR, and so I'm like, I don't care because I don't have VR. I really don't have much interest in VR because I don't have the space for it. Uh, and I have a dog that I would be all up in my face whenever I'm playing VR. So I just, I don't want to do it. Um, but like, yeah, then they showed Resident Evil 4 VR, which I was just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. We just got Resident Evil 4 VR. Yes, it was the original, but we just got it. Um, look, they gotta, they gotta keep that ball rolling. They don't have any Resident Evils coming out this year. So we get the Ada DLC and we get the, uh, the VR DLC or whatever they're, they're calling it. Marketing guys, right? Yep. <laughs> but Rich, what it, do you think you're going to go, um, do you think you'll get Resident Evil 4 remake to then get the Ada DLC? When, uh, when it's on a good sale, yeah. If, if, okay. the, if they're both on a good sale on Steam or, or, or PlayStation or something, yeah, I'll get it. Just to do the Ada stuff to, I'll play, I'll obviously play through Resident Evil 4 and, and then do the Ada stuff. Um, cause like they are kind of seemingly rewriting the entire world with these remake games. A little bit, like bit by bit, they're kind of rewriting some of the shit that went on, um, or, or just reimagining some things. I think it's all still like I think Resident Evil Eight is still canon, but now Resident Evil Four Remake is now more canon than the original Resident Evil Four, which is um, weird. Yeah, and then uh, we got Horizon Zero Pandora, which we knew about that. I think right, I, we probably did, but like the little bits I've, I saw of it, I was just like, okay, so it's first person Horizon Zero Dawn. Just with blue people. I was just like, I got a super Horizon Zero Dawn feeling from that game. Well, it's also like, if I remember the original trailer, you wake up as like a trained na- Navi, right? Yeah, you're Navi. you're a Navi. Who was like abducted and brainwashed by the humans to yeah. be like their soldier. Yeah. So like you start as like the humans are just basically trying to like destroy you and all the other ones that they trained that way because they're, I think they're getting like overrun by the actual Navi. Mm-hmm. So like that's at least like, that's a weird setup for a game. Yeah. I, it's just, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I it's not care any less about yeah. an Avatar game. Like, um, I feel like that that whole franchise makes a I, better game series than film series. I care more about Baby Steps than I do an Avatar game, and I don't care about Baby Steps. But you do care about Roblox for PS4. Oh, absolutely. Now I can play Roblox on my knees. Only on PS4, though. Yeah. I think that's hilarious. Like, Yeah. Right. Uh, oh, so yeah, it was uh, Ghostbusters was the VR, and then there was a, what was the other VR? I guess it was Resident Evil. I think there was a different VR. Game. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the order of things, and the IGN article that I have does not have it in yeah. the right order. But uh, Rich, let's let's just jump to the to the thing that you're you are most excited for: Foam Stars again, open beta again. There are no original titles because you have fucking Foam Stars. Which is fucking Splatoon, just on the PlayStation. And as no, they were they're, showing they're shooting the foam, as they were showing this the is characters, the no, I, as they were showing the characters, they all look like Splatoon characters, just not cartoony. Like I, it is just Splatoon. And I was, I, I obviously I forgot that they announced this before, and I was just like, this is, are you fucking kidding me? Like this is blatant that this is all this is. So you're going to jump into the open beta next week, right? No, I'm I'm adamantly against this game right now. I I will if any of my streamer friends play Foam Stars, I will avoid their stream when they're playing it. I am against wow. this game. Wow. Wow. Like that is I am 100% against this game. I remember when it was first announced on um, people like actually saw it. I think it was at um um Summer Game Fest and like apparently it, it's not bad. All right, then play Splatoon. <laughs> Like, well, apparently, like it doesn't play like Splatoon. Like it, it is a different feeling game. Uh, yeah, and it's on it's PlayStation. A different controller. <laughs> Look, man, Call of Duty and Battlefield are basically the same game too. Yeah, yeah, they are. Like one one military first person shooter is no different from the rest. Yeah, but when you go from military first person shooter, which there's, I mean, there there's limited change that you can do, uh, and li- limited innovation you can do when it comes to military to military game to Splatoon, a game where you run around as squids, inking the place and changing the color of everything. To Foam Stars, a game where you run around with people with foam guns that change the color to things, and you have to... Like, it is literally this... It is not, oh, they're the same type of game. It is literally the same game. Like, even the character models are exactly the same. 
I saw Splatoon in every single one of those foam star character models. Yeah, but they look more adult. Like they don't look like children. It's still like it is blatant. And you get to you get to surf on the foam and it builds walls and everyone's all hip and wearing future clothes. That's what Splatoon wears as hip future clothes. No, they they're fucking squids. They don't yeah. they don't wear anything that people would ever wear. They they wear hip future clothes. No, like, they wear clothes like for they, squids. You don't know what squids wear. They could be wearing that shit in the ocean right now. You have no way be. of knowing. But they wear the same clothes that these people were wearing. Like, it's just it is so fucking blatant. I don't care how good they say this game is. It is uh, it's ridiculous. I don't know, man. It's it's another one of those dumb party games. Well, multi multiplayer party games, I guess you'd you'd say. It's not even a. I mean, it's not really a party game because you probably can't have more than maybe two people on a screen at a time. So I, I would I'm not sorry. I, I don't mean like game. I don't mean like a Mario Party party. I mean like like it is, a, it is like you play it is with a, a party. It is a competitive shooter. Yeah, where you are shooting ink on things, where you're shooting colored foam on things. It is family friendly. PlayStation doesn't have any family friendly shooters. Do you really need family friendly shooters? I mean, Splatoon says you do. But that's I, I, look. I'm not trying to make the argument that Nintendo's allowed to do it, but like I, the argument is, this is fucking Splatoon. Yeah, but if if a 12 yeah. year old got a PlayStation Five and the bomb doesn't want them to have fucking Call of Duty, they get them Foamsters, and they'll be just as happy with that decision. Okay, yeah, but I, that's like again. I'm not arguing whether you get the game or not. I'm just arguing this is exa- this is the exact fucking game. That's what makes me mad about it. This is they, like they, they, it's, there's no hiding it. They didn't try to hide it. They like they just literally like oh, Splatoon one, two, and three. Look at what they do. Let's do that. And they That's, did it on the PlayStation. Th- but that happens all the time. Like literally all the time. Look at every like Cobb said every military shooter. Oh, Call of Duty did this thing? Okay, let's do this thing in the next Medal yeah. of Honor. I, yes, uh, but well, again, I mean, like, again, look, look at the fucking whole Soulsborns. But like, it, how many co- different companies tried to make Soulsborns after Dark Souls got huge? Like, that's, that's yes, they have, what happens. They, but they, and they reference that, and they, they take that, and they use that in their own style, and they change it, and they make it their own thing. You can Don't look at... Fucking... Can, no, okay, not give that me... Much. Give me Give me a FromSoft game, and give me a game that's exactly like FromSoft that's not FromSoft. Ah, uh, fuck. What is the name of it? Hold on, I'll look it up. There's one... Is it Neo one can- or Sekiro that's not a FromSoft Sek- game? S- Sekiro is a FromSoft game. Then, then, Neo then Neo is the one that's not. And uh, There's also a very much more Souls one that I can't remember, but I'm sure if I just Google Souls-like games, it'll be... With- I mean, look. Rich, you're not wrong. This is obviously a we need our Splatoon family friendly multiplayer shooting style game. But like also yeah. like it doesn't it doesn't impact me at all. The same way like all the shitty Soulsborne alikes and uh military shooters don't have any impact on me. I don't get mad about stuff that doesn't have an impact on me. You only live once. But the uh, fucking hold on, ready. Titan Soul Lord uh, uh... Titan Souls literally has souls in the fucking name. Lords of the Fallen is the one I was really trying to think of. Uh, came out in 2014. Uh, oh, is that what uh, what those were? Yeah. Okay, so Lords Titan of the Fallen so, definitely so, is so, a Souls. So, story. yes, Titan Souls is a Souls-like. It is the game that was created by the people who made Death's Door, which is also very much a Souls-like. But they, they're different. They are a different kind of play style. They... Titan Souls and 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 Death's Door are top down, different kind of game, different kind of art style. Like okay, the, you so are giving, you are you are you, Lords of the Fallen. Look, go look up Lords of the Fallen. It is fucking Dark Souls. But look, think about this. Like, like let's look at, at Foam Stars this way. Like, it's it's a Square Enix game. It's probably it's not one of their big studios that does like the Final Fantasy remake stuff or any of those. Right. So like. This game, like, it's not like, it's not like we're getting this game and we're not getting something else. Right. It's like, it's like back when we used to get all, like, the really bad, like, movie tie-in games, like Iron Man or, um, or, like, 13 different renditions of Nintendogs. Like, it's gonna get spewed out there. It, at least we're not losing out on a different game from, like, a AAA studio instead. hmm And, like, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some kids that'll wanna play this. And some weird adults that, like, 
have a grudge against Nintendo that have wanted to play Splatoon since 2012 and just haven't because it's never been available to them? It's me. Me. That's who you're talking about. You have a Switch, though. You could play it. No, I don't. You do. Yeah, you do. You, you have deny. two. You have two Switches. I'm sorry. Your wife has about. two Switches. You yeah, have two exactly. Switches in your home. You, you have you have access to Splatoon. If you wanted to play Splatoon, you could play Splatoon. You are actively not playing Splatoon just because it is Nintendo. So you can't make that argument. No, I'm but you know what? not playing Splatoon because I don't want to play Splatoon. You know what, though? It, I will give you all the credit if you buy Foam Stars just to spite Splatoon. I will play. <laughs> I will at least play the beta. <laughs> Wait. Well, hold on. Is it only running the weekend next weekend? I might not it's be able to play. It's the 29th that. to, like, the 1st, I think. Okay, then I don't know that I'll have any time to play the beta. But Yeah, it's Friday, Saturday, do, Sunday. I'll play it. I'll accept that. I'm pretty uh, sure we own Splatoon 3, honestly. You might. <laughs> I'm, um, pretty, I'm 99% sure Sarah has Splatoon for Switch. You don't own it, do you, Rich? No, I've always wanted to get into it, but I don't want to play it with randos. Well, and I, well look, I don't have, let me I, tell you about a game called Foam Stars. N- no. <laughs> no. Just no. Like, but and, Drew and will it, play it with you. Yeah, come and, on. No. I Like I said, like yes, <laughs> I'm looking at Lords of the Fallen, and yes, it is very Soulsborne and Souls-like, and it's Souls-like is part of the, its tag. I don't know how it, 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 it doesn't, I don't, it, I can see the influence for sure. I would have to play it to know exactly how similar it is. But again, my arguments here are if you look at the characters they showed in Foam Stars, you see Splatoon in that. You see that in them right there. Of course there. you do. <laughs> because they took Splatoon and said, oh, here's a squid with dreadlocks. Let's make a character with dreadlocks and let's make them look the same. Like they I'm look honest, exactly I don't, the same. I don't see the Splatoon characters in the Foam Star characters. I, I see it 100%. I also have paid almost no attention to Splatoon, so I'm not the person to, like, make that comparison. But beyond that, uh, we did mention earlier that there there's also Tales of Arise is getting an expansion two years later. Yeah. That's... Um, I actually, I don't remember anything about this trailer. Did you did you actually pay attention to it, Rich? Or did you see Tales of Arise and just go, nah? I'd, I, uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> That's what it I did. I just so threw... much he had to hit his microphone. Yeah, no, that yeah, was I really that did, was... and I just I messed my microphone up all the way. <laughs> uh, no, I I paid a little bit of attention to it. It's a year after the events, uh, and this is like kind of why I I don't really care. Um, is because it's it's a year after you saved the world, and we're like, oh, everyone ha- now has to live on our world, and it's like. I don't know, I just don't see how they can continue this story, and how they can bring this further. It just, to me, doesn't make sense. Um, and, like, the the combat system was good, but it got very repetitive after 40, 50 hours. And I just really had no care to do any of the side content, because I have I made the complaint a million times. It would cost you $40. The, the, or, they wouldn't cost you $40, but they have like twenty five dollars of just hey here's experience to level you up here's money because money gathering sucks in that game it's leveling up sucks in that game experience sucks in that game and so it's just to me there I have no interest in getting into that because like the experience gaining and the leveling up in the 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 experience system and the level system in that game just sucked so like for I them do remember to be, you talking about that and yeah. I, I fixed my microphone. Yeah, so, like, for them being, like, oh, it's a year later, it's a year after everything happened, and we saved the two worlds, um, it's like, alright, well, you guys are all, like, the kings and, like, you're, you're helping, like, rule this world and make sure the transition of space people living on this world works properly. How are you gonna go on an adventure, and who is this random person? Like, yes, it brings questions, but also, I, I don't, I, the lore didn't go that deep. This was... From what I've been told, this was honestly, some, most people who are fans of the Tales of Games, this is most of their least favorite game. Which, it's funny, like, I remember that game being kind of popular when it first came out. But yeah, like, the more you get away from it, the more people seem to be less excited yeah. for it. Yeah, it, it just, it was, it was a good game, but it, it had so many major flaws to it. And it's just like, it, I, I had enough, I, like, it had like seven different fucking endings. I, I, I labeled like four streams. We're at the end. We're at the end. We're at the end. Because every time we were at the end, 
there was more, another ending. And I don't mean that as in a, like, oh, secret ending. It's just, it, it just kept going and going and going. Yeah, that sounds about right. Just what you, just what you needed. <laughs> yeah. And, like, that was the first JRPG that I played. So, like, it doesn't even have anything to do with, like, oh, I was exhausted from JRPGs. Like, it was, oh, was the that first the beginning one. of your, your... That was, it was Tales of Arise, and then I did a month of Apex, then it was Star Ocean, and then it was Final Fantasy. Like, literally a month, so it was Tales of Arise was in March, Apex was in April, like, a month of Apex Legends in April, and then uh, May was Star Ocean, June was Final Fantasy, or mid-June was Final Fantasy. Man, you really did do a lot of RPGs, just back to back to back. I've beaten so many games this year. Three fucking RPGs. Few gonna of be, them were good. <laughs> gonna be four because I'm gonna. I I had somebody redeem to have me play Shenmue One on stream. Oh, which, which will happen in November. That's gonna um, be rough. Yeah, that game I, aged fucking awful. Apparently, they had like a remake or some shit like that that had the it first still and aged one. really yeah, poorly. I, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 it's 20 hours and I'm upset at the fact that it's 20 hours. Yeah, no, you, as you should be. Like, I understand why that game was kind of revolutionary for its time, but it aged like fucking spoiled milk. Yeah. Ugh. I am sorry. Like, yeah, that, the, like, the worst part is, like, that's gonna fucking kill your viewership, too. Cause it's such a boring fucking game to watch. Look, I, what viewership? But you know what I mean? Like, no one wants to watch that game because it, it fucking isn't good. I don't think then, I've I I think I I don't think I've averaged more than two viewers in the past like that's still two people. One still of them is people. me. Hey man, you count. You matter. Um, anything else you guys want to say though about the the direct or the state of play, whatever the fuck this thing's called? I didn't realize they were going with like a third person over the shoulder view for Hell Divers. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because that first one's like a top down shooter. Yeah, so... cause it, it's it's like a twin stick, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, pretty much the original. Mm. Yeah, you so, know what? So. I don't. I, that did not like register when I watched that. When I was going through, like, I haven't actually watched the whole state of play, but as I was like scrolling through it real fast, I was like, "The fuck is this third person shooter?" And I was like, "Oh, it's fucking Hell Divers." So I was like, "Oh, that's cool." Yeah, I never got into the first one, but I remember like seeing a bunch of it, and it looked like a cool game. It, it's fun. It's silly. Like, it's definitely got a bit of a, a Starship Troopers vibe. Is that yeah. a um, Iron Galaxy game? No. Um, I forget the name of the studio. They were the ones that, like, they did... Arrowhead. <sighs> were they the ones that did the first one? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, it actually... The, their Wikipedia actually says it was inspired by aliens and Starship Troopers. Yeah. I, I mean, fun. it definitely had, like, the comedy. The, like, tongue-in-cheek of Starship Troopers. Okay. Rich, did you ever play it? No, I never played Helldivers. I don't know if I have it available anywhere either. You know, um, I thought that first one I feel was like Housemark, it was a free yeah. game at some point. Oh, it definitely but, was. Because I, th- I think I own it. That doesn't mean much, but I'm pretty sure I own it. <laughs> and if I own it, it's probably from, like, a PlayStation Plus or something like that. Mm-hmm. Is Helldivers one word or two? One. Uh, one word. One word, two syllables? Three syllables? Three syllables? Yeah, three. I'm bad at syllables. Same. I Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't. don't have it. I checked all my... I checked Steam, Epic, PlayStation, and Switch. Uh, you, you know what? It might have been one of those free games... Um. In that stretch where you were forgetting to redeem them, you yeah. had that like year or so where you you like missed every couple of months. Yeah, it's. I have to imagine it's cheap at this point if you did want to try it. I mean, honestly, if I I would just get the new one if I'm gonna try it. Well, you gotta play the first one first. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm, I mean, you're, I'm, prob- I'm, you're probably. I'm right. gonna be 100 percent honest. I'm over that mindset. I I'm over that, the mindset of you. you like like you, 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 I'm over the mindset of you have to play it all. Uh, Look, man, the only way you're going to understand Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth, is if you play Final Fantasy 1 through 7 Original. Exactly. And then 8, 9, no. 10, 11, 12. Well, no, the only way you're going to understand Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you have to play Final Fantasy VII. Then you have to play Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Then you have to watch the Final Fantasy VII movies, both of them, Dares of Cerberus and Advent Children. Isn't Dares of Cerberus Dar- a game? Dares of Cerberus is a game. Okay, I didn't uh, know if there was a movie, right. too. No, that's right. And then, then, you have to watch the Final Fantasy movie that was made. The CG Final Fantasy movie that was made. Spirit then you have thin. to, then you have to play the Final Fantasy chibi game that's recently released that is a remake as well. Then you'll understand Final Fantasy 7. How about Kingdom Hearts? So to understand Kingdom Hearts, 
we have to go all the way back. You have to watch Steamboat with. Um, I think the the actual answer there is there's nothing you can do to actually understand Kingdom Hearts. This is true. Probably, yeah. Because I, f- I forget, did you finish all of them? I know no, you were I going st- through. I, them. S- I stopped at 3Ds. That's a that's a that is an understandable place to stop. Um, I think that it was I think it was 3Ds that I stopped. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I think I I I was RPG'd out because I just did so one. Many. I had one, I did one, two, and everything. I did one chain of memories, three chain of memories, two, everything between that, two, three Ds, and there was three Ds, something else, and then three. Like I was close. I just never, never finished it. Right. Um. But how about we talk about these leaks real quick? Because I thought they were kind of funny. Yeah. Sure. What What, what are they? Uh, Hell Divers uh is twenty dollars on Steam right now. The first one. Okay. Um. But anyway, so th- so. Because of the whole, like, FCC hearings and stuff like that, um, a bunch of emails, Microsoft executive emails, leaked that were in relation to that. Um, so just to go over some of the, the highlights real quick, there's an email that leaked from Phil, from Phil Spencer um, with him expressing how much he, he would like them to buy Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, and that he thinks of all of the other brands, Nintendo is probably the one that they have the best chance of having, like, a good enough relationship with. Um, to like, um, uh, collaborate. Um, and, but he also throws out that, uh, they, they had thought about purchasing Valve and WB Interactive. Hmm. Um, another one of these emails, um, expressed that they're, they expect to release the next generation of Xboxes in 2028. So in a year cycle at that point. Um, they're predicting to release new iterations of the current ones, like those mid generation ones next year, mm-hmm. which also would track, you know, halfway through the cycle. Um, Last December, Activision went to an event where they were shown, like, the specs and everything for the next Nintendo console. So that was December 2022. So that tracks with why we're seeing so much just, like, remakes and, like, nothing major coming out right now for, on Nintendo. Because they're amping up for their next plot platform. Um, I feel like there was one other one in here. And I'm drawing a blank on it now, and I didn't write it down, apparently. But, yeah. I just kind of thought that stuff was funny, and I wanted to, to bring it up real quick. Look, the like, only thing the only thing I can get behind is them buying Valve cuz then maybe we'll finally get a Half-Life 3. That's that is fair. I feel like Valve is like the only one that has enough money to not be purchased by Microsoft. Uh, Valve yeah. prints money. There's no way there's no way they they'd be they'd be able to be bought. Um and honestly, as much as all of the lawmakers tried to fight the purchase of Microsoft and Act- uh, Activision, um, th- th- that would probably be fought even more with Valve because Valve has. I feel like Valve is the like that. That would be too much more of a monopoly because that would they would own PCs. Like there would be yeah. no 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 doubt because that they would own Steam at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and that th- there's no way that would go through. I could see the WB Interactive one happening because they were trying to sell off those studios anyway. Yeah, uh, they yeah. may have in the long run. I don't really remember. But that would have put, like, Rocksteady and um, WB Montreal, like, firmly under mm-hmm. um, Microsoft. A NetherRealm. Oh, right, right. I forgot NetherRealm was owned by them, too. Or probably the most important one of all of them. Yeah, yeah, honestly, you're probably right. Like, they're, they're the only consistent one, at the very least. Uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just – it's just funny. Like, um, the FCC is saying that this is Microsoft's fault that these things were leaked. Um, and I know Phil Spencer came out and, like, acknowledged, like – yeah, this happens, but, like, we're just going to keep looking forward. Like, yeah. some of these emails are, like, two years old. Like, oh, that's what the other one was. There was an email of, um to the Microsoft, like, CEO, I forget his name, um from Phil Spencer with Phil talking about the reveal of the PS5 in early 2020 and basically going, like, we got this. Like, we were playing catch up the entire last gen, but our shit's better this time. And then they unfortunately went to have like three years with no solid first party releases. Yeah. Until this year with Starfield. Yeah. Until they bought somebody to yeah. get the first party release. Yeah. Like they have all these studios, but like they're all just in like this development cycle still where we haven't seen the games yet. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that up real quick because I, I did think it was kind of funny. There, I, yeah. I think there, it was part of these leaks, but there was one other thing in them. Oh, what was it? The uh, round all digital Xbox Series X. Oh yeah, that that was part of the new iteration, like the like the mid yeah. cycle. It was going to be like a smaller form factor 
factor series x with a two terabyte drive no disk drive just like the series s does and then also like a and a new version of the series s that i assume would also be smaller and would be slightly less powerful just like the the current models which oh you wrote iteration i thought that meant i thought you said inter interactions I'm like, oh i i did i wrote the wrong word because i did this on my phone while i was at my client today and forgot to come back over it okay i was like what, what do you mean by interactions like who who's interacting with who i mean oh, iterations <laughs> in my in my defense, I at least said the right word when I was talking about it. No, you did. I was just, I was like, it, it, I was just confused looking at that in general. Right. Which that is a good thing to be confused about because I put the wrong fucking word there. Um, but yeah, uh, Rich, do you want to talk a little bit about Starfield and Ender Lilies? I, I mean, let's start with Starfield. I don't really have much to say about because I, I, I only played it for six hours. <laughs> um, wow. I, yeah, I only played it for six, six and a half hours. And I was uh, very out of it at, at, like, the last hour and a half to two hours, because I was just tired from the night before because of asshole Airbnb owner next door. Um, but yeah, I played it for about six hours. It's it's Bethesda game. It's Bethesda. Like, if you like Bethesda, you like game. If you don't like Bethesda, you don't like game. Like, that's really... It, it's how it is. Um, I... Yeah, it's I'm I'm getting lost in doing things. The one thing that's good about this game that like and good in a sense of like it'll prevent me from wandering off too much is that you can't wander off because it's all fucking menus. So if you want to go from really planet is. to planet, like that is the like that is the worst literal worst part of this game is how much time I spend in my menu. And the menus are bad. The UI is bad. And so, like, it's just, it is, I, I heard that the ship travel is a little bit of a slog, but like, if you want to go to, say, say you want to come to Earth. I, I, Earth is a planet that you can fly to in this game. Uh, this game takes place in the year like 2300-ish or something like that. I can't fully remember. Uh, you can fly to Earth. Uh, Earth is probably a bad example. Let's say Mars. You want to go to Mars, you fly to Mars. But, say you want to come to Mars and just land on Mars. You can't do that. You have to fly to Mars airspace. And once you reach Mars airspace, oh, let's scan you to make sure you don't have any contraband. All right, you're good to go. And then you have to go back into your fucking menu to land on Mars. Like, why? Why do you do the Scan for contraband when I land or some shit like that. Like, if you want to make that a thing, don't make me have to go into my menu to start to, to, to fast travel, to stop the fast travel, to go into my menu to fast travel. Yeah, all that stuff yeah. was really stupid, and, like, it, flying the ship did not feel especially good. No, I, it, it feels a little bit better if you're in third-person mode than if you're in first-person mode, but it's still, you're right, it doesn't feel good, it's, it's clunky, it's, like... This was supposed to be their big thing, and, like, I feel like No Man's Sky did this so much better. They could have done so much more time and care into the space travel, at least, so that, like, you know, maybe I didn't have to go from menu to menu to menu. Like, And that's the thing, like, it, say, say I'm at Earth, and I want to go to the moon, which the moon is in orbit from Earth, and I'm in Earth airspace. Naturally, you will just go to the moon. No, you have to fast travel to the moon airspace and then fast travel to the fucking moon. Yeah, so I went, the little bit I played, I went to, like, the, the, um, I don't even know what you would call it, the, like, pirate thing, and then finished that and tried to go to, like, the next place, and yeah. it was just immediately, like, yeah, so zoom, zoom out, like, three times, and then you can see your next bling. But then, like, zoom in on that a couple times, and then you can travel there. But then you're just going to travel to, like, that system. You still have to travel to that planet, and then you have to land on that planet. So you have to just keep going into your menus. Yeah. And so, like, they're, they're like, all right, you, you can simpl simplify it by going into your missions tab and selecting the mission that you want to do. And it'll bring you right to the planet that you need to travel to or right to the sector or wherever that you need to travel to. But it's just like, all right, that's fine. I, like, the one menu, like... I understand doing this menu wise when going from like 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 galaxy to galaxy. But if I want to fast travel to from Earth to Mars, I should be able to just point my ship to Mars. You know, 
like, like how No Man's Sky does it. You point your ship to the planet you want to go to, you hit two buttons, and it sends you there. Yeah. Or at least you should, it would be nice if you could just go faster and, like, actually enjoy the space travel a little bit. Yeah. And, and that's, like, you, you made space. Like, yes, there's nothing in space. I get it. I totally get it. From Earth to Mars, there's nothing. And so it sucks. Agreed. So, but to make me have to go from menu to menu to menu to menu just constantly, it's just, it, 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 it does take you, it takes me out of immersion when it comes to that. So I'm like, yeah, all right, you, you well, do. You spend a lot of time in the menus. Yeah. And like the, the main menu itself is a radio wheel and it's the top left is for, um, is for, uh, like, like your maps. The bottom left is, um, I don't remember. I, it might be like your character. And from, no, I don't remember what your bottom left is. Maybe your ship or something. Your bottom, like your directly down is the missions. You can go right to the missions menu. Your top right is your character information and your skill points. So no, yeah, your bottom left is your character information. Your top right is your skill point allocation. Why are they two different menus? Why not? Oh, you got to level up. Go to your character information and pick your next skill set. Yeah, they they didn't do a good job with the the menuing, but I feel I, like do are Bethesda games ever like good menuing? Because I feel like whenever I see people playing no. them, the menuing is always kind of. I, I mean, no, they're always good. Like Fallout's menu is great because it's on the Pip Boy, and you just it's the, like you just scroll through to whatever wherever. If you need to go to map, you just scroll over to the map. It's the same as most menus. It's just on the Pip Boy, so it's a little clunky. Because it's by design that way, because it's like an older technology. Um, that uh, Sky like like Elder uh, Elden uh, uh, Elder Scrolls is just a fucking menu. It's just a a tiered menu that is like basically um, what's like like say it, it there's a different way there's a way you can view it in in like in it, it it's it's a foldered menu and you open up one folder and it opens up another tab and you can go to the next tab and the next tab and there's multiple tabs basically but it's just like it's not it's not a bad menu like th- this is literally the worst ui i've ever seen it is so bad that like i was told to mod it to mod the ui and they 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 have made the ui better i believe that um I, I haven't done that yet. I'm, I'm probably not going to bother. I'll get used to it eventually, or I'll just probably stop playing, because that's what happens with Bethesda games. Is I'll just play it until I'm done. And I, I'll be playing it again on Sunday and Monday this week, but then it'll, I'll be off of playing it for all of October, for Dead October. So maybe so I'll play it when I have... to it. Probably not. Maybe I'll play it again when I have downtime or something like that throughout October. Um, but yeah, it's just... Is Bethesda... Like, that's... Is Bethesda in space? It's and I don't want to say it's Sky, it's Fallout in space. It's not. It's Skyrim in space. It's more Skyrim in space than it is Fallout. And there, those games are drastically different. Too. Um, but it's 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 Bethesda, it's Bethesda in space more so than either of the two in space. Uh, the other one though, uh, Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights. I beat the game three times. Um, because there's three different endings. The A ending is very simple to get. The B ending is relatively easy to get, and then the C ending is a little bit harder. Um, but that game is great. It is so beautiful. The music is fantastic. Uh, the last area, I fucking hated the music, just because... So the last area, you're basically within the inner cells of the organism that creates the issues in the world. And okay. so the, the music can be a little creepy, and occasionally you'll just hear like a woman <gasps> like breathe in. As you're moving around. And it's just like, I hate it. I hate it. It's so weird and creepy. Um, but yeah, uh, to, to clear the, to, to get all three endings, you have to, uh, find, to get the third ending, the final ending, the true ending, you have to find six tablet pieces and then repair them. So in order to do that, you have to defeat all the bosses and get all the abilities. Um, there are certain sections and certain secret items that you can get that actually requires you to do some special maneuvering with some of the some of the spirits. Uh, and I don't know how people figure this shit out. It's ridiculous how people figure this shit out. Um, but, like, there's long gaps. And so I was expecting when I saw the long gaps or the high jumps 
that like similar to Hollow Knight, you're going to get like a long dash that like you charge up and you go forever until you hit a wall. No, this was your long dash, your like major dash ability. He it just he, it pushes you forward as like a run, but if you go off the ledge, they drop. But they keep going forward faster. So some of the stuff you had to do would be like you jump off the ledge and then attack with one of the other souls twice. And that like as you charge, they like float in the air. So you're attacking in the air. And when you release your charge attack, it knocks them back and up a little bit. So you have to charge attack twice and then do your second jump and then charge attack twice again and then do your dash and then do the charge attack twice again. At that point, you can't do any more jumps or dashes, so you actually had to equip um, one of two souls that are like a secondary soul that will f- that literally they throw you. The one of them throws you up, the other one throws you forward. And like, I don't understand how people figured out, oh, this is where this shit is and this is how to do it, like the first time. Because I would never have figured some of this stuff out. Where, where locations are and how you're supposed to get there and figure that out. It was insane. It is kind of crazy how people figure some of that stuff out, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's wild. And so, like, I had somebody pop into my stream and talk me through some of the harder things to get to. Um, once you refill the, rebuild the tablet and things like that. Um, and, or before you rebuild the tablet to get, uh, endings B, uh, B and E or B and C, you just, you, you, go all the way down to the bottom and you fight the boss. Um, and the first time you fight the boss, if you don't have everything finished, uh, you get the, you get ending B and then to get the true ending, you have to, you don't have to have all the rooms cleared and have all the relics, but you at least have to have like a specific amulet created, which means you have to find six of these specific items that are hidden behind locked doors. And then you go fight the, the boss again. And, uh, it's a little bit more difficult the second time because if as long you have to also make sure you have the amulet equipped that you just made um because once you defeat the boss you then have to kill the boss again there's only one phase in well, that that's phase. inconsiderate it's, so it's like and each boss has like three phases well this boss you do the three phases you kill them and then you have to do the fourth phase however i don't think we really got into the whole idea of combat in the game uh you played it a little bit right Cobb? i think you did yeah we talked about it a little bit later yeah last week but like some of your attacks or most of your attacks have limited uses so at that point you're you're when you have to do that fourth phase and it has a full health bar it doesn't recover your attack uses so then you have to figure out how to manage your da- your your mitigate your uses of some of your spirits so that you have them for this fourth phase and it was like it was interesting unfortunately i personally think the game is a little too easy um, I, I wish it was a little harder. I wish there was a little bit more consequence to death. I thought it How, didn't it have difficulty levels. I don't think so. Uh, I have, I, I, I don't think it did. If it did, there's no achievements for playing on higher, harder difficulty levels. So I don't know. A lot I, of I have got rid of those. I have one achievement left and that is to get to level 99 or level 100. I, it's to get to max level and I'm like nine levels from there. I wasn't going to grind that at one o'clock in the morning. Though. Um, understandable. But yeah, so, it's, and like the endings, each ending is different. Ending one, like you literally just have to go all the way to the right, to the very last room. And they're like, look, just leave and live your best life. And she just leaves. And that's ending one. And then ending two and three are like, oh, you, you help defeat the blight, the blight lord and either you win or you lose, basically. You either die in 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 B by like you defeat the blight lord but when you go to purify it it ends up taking your life as well or in C you are able to refresh yourself and purify it and survive um something i didn't recognize until last night though which is really cool the higher level you get the more your character's body changes to showcase cuz like she is the experience she gets is blight it's like so she is getting more and more infected and corrupted as you kill things as you purify things and say purify the world she is becoming more corrupted with the blight but she is immune to the blight but she still gets affected by it physically okay. um and so like she starts to like at the end of it like she has like kind of scaling on her face 
Uh, she starts to grow tendrils where she, she had hair before and things like that. It was, I didn't recognize that until like last night when I was, I was like, oh, she does not look the same. That's really cool. That's interesting. That is actually uh, a nice little aesthetic because yeah. it's not like it's a, um, it's not like it's a, a third person, like, free camera game like it's a it's a side scrolling game so you're not yeah. necessarily like up on the character all that often yeah um there were really there was really only like one maybe two bosses that were really difficult to me at least uh i honestly Cobb, i think you you'd probably be able you'd probably have a good time with it i don't think you'd have too difficult of a time maybe one or two bosses you'd be un, unhappy with but i feel like this is a game that you might actually enjoy to continue to play more yeah like the little bit i played of it it, it was fine it just it didn't really click with me and because like i i I think i've played through the same area twice because i died twice Mm -hmm. and after that that second death i'm just like okay i I don't want to go through here again like i'm obviously the combat is not clicking with me i'm just gonna not play this right now and i just haven't ever gone back to it and uh there was one of oh uh i i watched a lore video on it today because it's again one of those like it's kind of similar to like metroid like you never really know fully what's going on in metroid no matter how many times you play it like it's just like it's kind of disconnected because you're trying to understand what's going on in that world but also what's going on with samus and that's like kind of similar to here is like you get disconnected notes here and there and bits by bits throughout that you don't actually know you like you have to really read the notes as like they are uh not as you get them but as like they show in the menu to kind of get an understanding of what happens. But I was like, I don't, I, I can't read that well. So I just, I watched a lore video and I was like, all right, this is actually really interesting. And it's a really cool, the world that these people built. Cause I, th- I think it's a super small team. I don't really know a hundred percent. Let's find out. Ender Lily, uh, a globe and live wire ink are the developers. Well, they don't have Wikipedia pages, so I don't know how many people are in them, which uh, probably means globe- that it is a small studio. Yeah, Aglobe is a Japanese, uh, is a Japanese-based company. Uh, let's see, you know, what, let's bring you up to this screen. Uh, works. Let's see what they got. Um, Fate Grand Order Cosmos Keegan Kengen Ultimate Battle Last Claudia Backslash, and then a couple of apps. Yeah, so it's probably not like a, a an especially large team. No, Brave Frontier. Yeah, not really, not really a a a big team. And Livewire. Uh, is another Japanese publisher. Yeah. So, are you gonna go and um get the the last few levels you need to hundred percent the game? Yeah, not on stream. I'm gonna just do kinda it on just your own. Like, yeah, I was. I, I wanted to actually do it today before we started recording, but uh, uh, dinner and everything just took a little too long to set up. Plus, I was working till like quarter after or something like that. Uh, so I might do it on um. Friday, I have off on Friday, so I might do it a little bit on Friday if I have time. Just here and there, not really. I, not I, like, like I'm force not, yourself to do it, but yeah. like hop in there, play around for a little while. Yeah, like, get I, bored, stop. I've got, like I got an hour to kill, or I've got twenty minutes to kill. Let me pop in there and and do it a few times because like there's two there's two items that increase experience gain. The best way to do it is like in the last area that gives the most experience. Um, so it's just going back and forth and doing those over and over. Uh, but yeah, I I want to I want to get there. Ex- leveling up was pretty quick. It wasn't too hard. Um, well, but good. I do want to get I do want to get it just to get, just to have it and have all the trophies or achievements. Uh, but yeah, it was it, it's a really good game. I I enjoyed it. I hope they maybe expand on it a little bit more. That would be nice because basically this game takes place in one of six kingdoms in this world, and it's unclear whether or not what you did has affected the entire world, or just your kingdom. And so it would be interesting for them to carry the game further into, or, or move move the game further into different world, or different kingdoms, and to be like, and to see if you have to still, if, if or, and to clear the blight in those. Yeah, and you know, it's not that old of a game, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if we got like a sequel to it at some point, because it, it, yeah. it did fairly well, I believe. Yeah, I, 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 I think so, but I also... In here, uh, when did it come out? Because I I was twenty twenty one. Yeah, okay. So it wasn't actually that late that I heard about it. I think I only heard about it in twenty twenty two. Yeah, um, I mean, like I I heard people talk about it like right after it came out on like different podcasts and stuff, and generally like favorably talk about it. So, but anything else you want to say about Ender Lilies? Um, play it. Definitely just play it. I, I no. yeah, I don't really have uh, anything else to say about it. 
right. I'm trying to think of what games came out in 2021 because people are like, oh, this is the best game of 2021. And I'm like, but everyone says that. Like, like anyone's favorite well, game is the best game of that year. It's 2021 was the year of not getting a lot of game. It was one of the years of not getting a lot of games because of COVID. Like, like, like a lot of games got like, that's also why like 2022 Elden Ring got all the awards because we really didn't get a lot of AAA titles that year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. Like, like I feel like it's starting to catch up now, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, instead of talking about crisis core, um, I say we just call it, and I'll talk about Crisis Core next week. I'm tired, so. Sounds good. Sure. All right. Well, next week, aside from talking about Crisis Core Reunion, uh, we will also be talking about the second half of Jurassic Park, the novel by Michael Crichton. So that'll be yes. exciting. Um, but other than that, if you would like to find more of our content, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there with your dollars, you can go to your favorite podcast platform like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Rate us, review us, subscribe to us. All of that stuff helps. You can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or at one underscore quest on Instagram and Twitter. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo. And you can always send us emails to social at one-quest.com. Uh, and Rich, what is your streaming? Uh, r- r- real quick, uh, I was completely wrong. 2021 was chock full of games. It Takes Two, Deathloop, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, uh, Life is Strange, Canterbury of Spirits. These are just a bunch of the games listed on the Game Awards for 2021. So, I was totally wrong. Um, stream is, um, Starfield. Starfield, uh, hopefully me and Timmy will be able to, uh, get all the achievements and we were here together. Uh, and, um, uh, see if these are the next couple of, uh, days and weeks. And then starting in October, on October 1st, I'll be playing Dead Island 1, uh, as well as on Tuesdays, uh, co-op Tuesdays will be me, Timmy, Xeno Alien, and one more, I have to figure out who, I still haven't gotten a fourth yet, uh, we'll be playing Left, the Left 4 Dead series. So we'll be starting with Left 4 Dead episode one going all the way through and then be doing left for dead two throughout the month of October. Cause it is dead October playing every game or not every game and as many games as I can with the title dead with dead in the title, uh, throughout October, there will be some dead by daylight as well. Red dead and Redem- revolver. N- n- no, I, I don't want to do red dead redemption. I don't want to no, do I said this. revolver. Yeah, no, I don't want to do this. So uh, red dead redemption, the, you'd have that zombie DLC. The, the idea is for spooky games. I wanted to do, I wanted to do Dead Space, but it is very likely that the gaming voice actors are going on strike, uh, or that SAG AFTRA is also adding the gaming voice actors on strike starting on Monday next week on the 25th. Right. It's very likely that is going to happen. And they are requesting, although you don't have to, they're requesting that any streamers not play games that are part of struck content. EA is going to be struck. EA owns Dead Space, therefore I can't play Dead Space. But um, you could play Red Dead Redemption, the zombie DLC. No. I've got <laughs> plenty of other dead games like Dead Horde, which I don't really know. I have, I have a game called Dead Poly. Um, and then, but I, I literally have Dead Island, Dead Island Retro Revenge, and Dead Island Riptide to get through before I even do any other dead games beyond Left 4 yeah, Dead. And give, your, give yourself that little bit of a buffer this time so that you're not, you know... Well, Stuck having to rush through a bunch of games to finish them in the 31 days. It's not a challenge this time. It's yeah. just through, we're just playing them. We're playing, we're sticking to my normal stream schedule, and whatever game we finish the month on, we'll beat that before we move to our next game. Um, but that, like, I'm not, I'm not like forcing to beat X amount of games in X amount of time. It's just to have fun. So we'll probably even do some Dead by Daylight. And, uh, I'm probably, maybe starting tomorrow going to do a channel point redemption reward i haven't figured out the numbers yet um but if we can reach the channel point redemption i will do a midnight stream i have to figure out what day i'm off in october on a friday i think it's it might be the 13th it might be the 27th it might be both i have to figure out which one and if we can get all the points i'll do a late night phasmophobia stream uh because people get super scared playing that game um and so to do the spooky phasmo spookiness. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's that's stream for the next month or so. Please come right. hang out and check it out. I'd really appreciate it. What was the channel name again? 
Uh, Twitch.tv slash beyond us for walnuts. Good job. And with that, we will be back next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.